Hello and welcome back to the Wasteland that is known as Fallout 76. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the game now that I've actually played the game for quite some time. It's gone through patches, it's gone through its downs and its ups, it's gone through all the hype and it's gone through all the negative feedbacks. With this in mind, I'm going to go over my list here. Today I'm going to be going over the massive world, the new rendering, light, the light details, and 16 times the detail according to them. Uh, the follow creatures, new new creatures, old creatures, you know, just general my thoughts on how they look and how they react. I'm going to be going over the storytelling aspects of the game since it has changed from Fallout 4, which I did not play, unfortunately. I didn't have the money to buy that one. I might pick it up at some point and play through it just to see the differences, but as of right now, this here is what I'm going off of. Uh, the 12 players, how it's not an amusement park, basically. There's not a whole bunch of people there, but that's because it's a new, it's, 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 it's a wasteland. There's not going to be that many people alive out there, let's be honest. And it's not far in the future when many vaults have opened up, although I have been seeing other vault dwellers in the open world. And you can't actually move their bodies to see what vault they're from, because the number's on the back, but it's not there. So I'm wondering if that's like leading to DLC, but that's in a different video. Anyway, I'm going to be going into multiplayer, I'm going to be going into the nukes, and some bugs, because everyone loves bugs, and I'll go over the collector's edition, because why not? With that in mind, let's start the video, and here we go. Okay, so first off is the massive world. This is quite a big world for me. I haven't played Fallout 4 like I mentioned before. I haven't bought it, and I might at some point to compare the two. But for me, it seems like a massive world. It's bigger than Skyrim, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. And it seems like there's a lot going on in there. There's always something going on when I'm walking down the streets. There's a dead body there. Down here, there's some robots that are just protecting this place. This place is probably better optimized than the rest of the game because this is the starting area. But other than that, I think the world is pretty finely detailed. Once you really get into the settings and like get rid of that hood, it looks really good. But it comes at a price because there are some assets that look really good. Like as you can see here, this guy looks all shiny and nice. But then there are some where you look up to it and there's not 16 times the detail. It looks like there's two times no detail. <laughs> but all in all, I'm enjoying the game quite now. You can see we're going out here. I'm going to show some places in the background that look really good. I find the best way to enjoy the way the game looks is to actually go into the settings and set the opacity opacity of your hood, your HUD, down a little bit so that it's see-through, so you can actually see the world, set your graphics up to max, and make it so your most movement speed is not quick jolting around, because then you can actually enjoy the panning and all that other stuff. It looks really cool in the videos you can see in the back here. Uh, next one, moving on to the creature. Okay, so there are a lot of mobs in this. By mobs, I mean enemies, and I don't feel like listing all of them, so I'm just going to go over the ones I actually have pictures of in a very fast order. So, you're going to enjoy the pictures, and here we go. We have the Grifton Monster. We have robots. We even have really, really ugly dogs. We also have... Hey, what? General Teddy? No, you're not supposed to be here. We have Mothman. It comes in a variety of different colors, which I don't have. We have Death Claws. Scorched Beast, Scorched Queen, Uncle Charlie, Did, uh, hold up, that's from my private collection. We have this weird purple alien thing, and this big, ugly, fleshy crab thing. Santa Rats? Last week's party pick, we have fast zombies, high zombies, radioactive zombies, and all around sexy beasts. Oh, and we've got green crabs. No! Okay, and now on to storytelling. There are a couple main ways that they do the storytelling in this game. Since they don't have en any NPCs in this game, they do it through holotapes, as you can see here. Once I actually make it there, I get to my holotapes. These here are the story missions, basically, well, missions in general, which tell stories, little tiny ones. 
Uh, you get the side, the main, the dailies, and the events that pop up randomly. The top half will show you the ones you can do. The bottom half are the ones you've done. As you can see, I've done playtime, someone to talk to, and stuff like that. So that's telling you through events. Next is the hollow tapes here. As you can see, I have lots of them. They're kind of bugged out. If they have that icon next to them, which you see here, that actually means that they need to be done for the quest. But I've done all of them. That's how I unlocked all of them. And I still have to do them. So now we're going to go over here in the second part. Okay, so the second way to do it is actually through notes you find in the world. As you can see here, I'm in this building walking around. This isn't exactly a good example because it doesn't actually lead anywhere. But it gets you in the same kind of mindset of what you should be doing. So I'm going to walk into this building and I hear footsteps around, so I'm going to kill them. You got to do that. So kill that guy. Don't worry about it. He's fine. He's just sleeping it off. What about his friend up here? I hear his friend. I don't know. Is he up or down? Oh, he's down. I'll put him to sleep too. Oh, he's got another friend. I'll put him to sleep. There you go. Now, I still hear someone wandering around. I'm not sure where he is. Oh, there he is. I'm going to put him to sleep. Oh, I missed and shot the wall. Don't worry about that. Put him to sleep. Now, I'm going to walk up here. All right. We've got a little room here. Well, let's go in here. What do we got? I'm going to turn off my light like a gentleman before I enter. Oh, we've got a little note. A postcard from Elizabeth. It says, Hi, Daddy. Mommy helped me write this letter. I hope you like it. She's helping me with the letters and stuff. I hope you like it. I love you, Daddy. This is your daughter, Elizabeth. That's kind of cool seeing those little postcards around. And that kind of got me thinking like, hmm, I wonder if she's still around here, if there's a little more lore. So I start looking around the room. You know, maybe there's another note somewhere else. Uh, let's see. There's nothing in here. Maybe in the bathroom. They left a note saying, hey, we're leaving somewhere. Uh, nope, but we do get some uh, buff out. Because, you know, could get ripped. All right, so once we take that, we're gonna go, all right, so there's nothing there. We're gonna go in here. We can see this little cage there for the baby, obviously. All right, so we're gonna open the door because she was definitely a baby. Uh, we've got the kids' room, as you can see. Babies, windows going crazy, because why not? Nothing in there. All right, so maybe they're in the washing room. No, nothing in there. What about out here? Is there any notes or anything out here? There's a little camp, so maybe after the bombs went, they came out here, had a beer, whatever. I'm not seeing any notes. I go over there, there's nothing there, so I'm going to go back inside and take a look. I'm going to look around, I'll be right back. Upon further inspection, I realize there's nothing in there, so I'll come back outside and I'm going to go upstairs. Maybe they went to the roof to, to watch the bombs fall, as you can see, and maybe their corpses are up there, or there's different kinds of stuff up there. So I'm going to head upstairs here, and I'm greeted by this, off this officer of the law, so I'm going to take him out like usual, and I'm going to walk up these stairs. Oh, I'm greeted by a locked door. Great old locked door. So I'm going to unlock this door. Maybe there's notes up here. Maybe they lock themselves in because they're infected like that guy there. Well, we'll find out here soon. So once I finally figure out this lock and pick it, there we go. I open the door and then I'm going to walk inside. Let's see. So we've got a safe. We've got a dead corpse, which we just did that. Don't worry about it. We've got some cooking, a duffel bag, you know, everything we really don't need in there. I'll open that safe in a little bit. I'll change my perks around or whatever. So someone was definitely up here after the war. Uh, burnt out fire. So they've been cooking some hot dogs, which look fresh, which are kind of weird. A machine for fresh cake because, well, you know, got to have cake and stuff. Look over here. No, there is nothing. Well, maybe down here. This place looks kind of cool. We've got another barbecue. These guys really like to barbecue. Some plates. Nothing really. Uh, a locked door. I don't know why there's a locked door there. But anyway, oh, okay. They That's... Uh, that's safe. Let's not do that. Let's just Superman up here. Yeah, you. Yep. All right. So there's not really much up here. It's just kind of sad. Hmm. You know what? Let's open up this safe. All right. So we're gonna pick the lock here, like everything else we're doing around here. These people really like their locks. Anyway, here we go. In a second now. No. Oh, there we go. I pick the lock. What's in here? Nothing. Some ammo, some overdrive, and an arm. That's nothing we really need. So let's go over here. Anything here? No, oh, just some shotgun shells, nothing really over there. Hmm, it's beginning to look like these people just disappeared. Well, let's check up here. Maybe up on the roof? Hmm, no, these stairways lead to nothing. It's a little, really useful of them to put those there. And we got a birdhouse, that's kind of nice. Uh, oh, we've got a note here. What is this? What is this? Oh, right. So, the radiation issue is getting really bad. One of the guys just didn't wake up this morning. And some of the other people's hair started to lose their hair. I was brushing something off my neck in the middle of the night and thought it was just a fly, but I... 
I guess she like pulled off a piece of her skin or her ear or something. I don't know why her ear's on her neck, but weirder things have happened in the wasteland. Alright, so that's definitely not it. And maybe this doesn't have a story to it. Which kind of sucks. And you know what? I actually don't think there is a story to this one. That's the way it is a lot of the time. You see notes that are like, oh sweet, there's a story, and it doesn't lead anywhere. But on the odd occasion, you will find a really cool note that will lead you on this huge quest. I see over there there's a bottle caps. For some reason, I didn't do it. Maybe the little girl threw the money off before they ended up wandering off and dying. Mm -mm. But it's Bethesda. Kids don't die. That She's probably mutated somewhere and turned into some weird super being mutant thing. I'm gonna go over here and steal her money though because she doesn't need that wherever she is. Anyway, that got, that concludes that there. Next we're going to be moving on to uh, multiplayer. It's kinda cool. So multiplayer is an ongoing problem in this game. Not many people like it because it's supposed to be rag em, tag em, shoot em up and destroy em kind of thing. Build a base and destroy it. And this game is different. As described here in this video. You'll be in a world with dozens not hundreds and not thousands of other players. It's the apocalypse, it's not an amusement park. And that makes total sense because in this game there are not a whole lot of things. But he later goes on into like tweets or something else saying that he wants it to be so when you come up to a player it's supposed to feel like tension, like you never know what they're gonna do, like in this background footage here. Oh no, please don't. Please don't shoot me. I don't know what you're going to do. You're probably going to kill me and steal all of my loot. I'm ready for you. What do you think you're doing? I'm going to flash my light at you. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I guess you're friendly. And you know what? That's basically how PvP goes in this game. You walk up to someone, you're like, oh, I'm gonna get them, they're gonna shoot me, it's gonna be this epic battle, and they wave at you and send you on your way in the middle of this nuke storm, because PvP doesn't really exist in this game. There's an option for it there, if you shoot them, and they decide to shoot you back, they'll kill you, but PvP's been enabled, you can choose to react to them and hunt them down and kill them again for your caps that you, that you lost, because... They, you do no damage to them when you shoot them, but when they retaliate, PvP starts and they kill you instantly. Anyway, PvP is pretty much broken in this game, as you can see, but it's going to be fixed in hopefully this next patch. They're talking about putting in a new PvP mode, maybe a dedicated server or whatever. I know there's a PvP radio station that sends you hunting other players, but nobody ever uses that. Next up we have nukes. Nukes are kind of interesting in the fact that they change the world around you in a way. It basically just changes the lighting effects, the mobs that spawn, and the general tint of the world around you to an orange glow color. Minus the green glowing animals. And you get this really cool sound in the background. That is really eerie. Like when someone launches a nuke, it's a, it comes up with a robotic voice, and it's just like, "Warning: nuclear strike imminent." And then this just starts blasting around the map, and it's so creepy and eerie. Especially if you don't look at your map to see which landing, and you're wondering like, "Is it gonna go off near me? Is it gonna go off next door and blow up the neighbors?" You never know. But what I do know is that you're gonna need one of your power armor suits. If you don't. Probably gonna die of radiation, unless you have a radiation suit, but those are kind of weak. They don't deal with damage and energy resistance and all that other stuff. It only does radiation damage resistance, which is bad for you. Well, I mean, it's good for you, but considering there are mobs attacking you all the time, the Scorch Beast Queen and all that other stuff, it's really not a good idea to go in there with just a radiation suit. It's kind of lame. So I get in my suit here. I'm overburdened because, you know, I'm always overburdened. So I drop some stuff. And of course, once you enter, you hear guns blaring everywhere, just machine gun bullets going everywhere, you're just being chased by a weird lizard thing. It's red because I have a uh, targeting system installed in my suit. I tried to kill it, but they uh, resist, they change the damage things on explosive ammo, so I just look at the so much. And he survives. He's slithering around, and I decide, you know what, I'm not going to do this. So I'm going to wander into town here, so this is basically what happens, this here is a normal town, but then when you nuke it, everything goes orange, and there's weird creatures that pop up, it looks really cool, 
Uh, it looks really cool when you're in a place like this with destroyed buildings. It just looks like a nuke place. All in all, it just looks really nice. I do like it when you nuke an area, especially a place like this. Ugh. All in all, there are actually a lot of bugs in this game, and there have been a lot of bugs, and there will most likely be more bugs. Anything from stretchy arms dude here, to server disconnects, to general stability issues, the, the list goes on and on, and on, and on, and on. Anyway, there's a lot of bugs in this game. It, it, despite that, I still think it's fun. It is getting better. The last couple patches have fixed a lot of bugs. They've introduced some new ones, but that's just the way things go. You know, it's not as easy as just saying, hey, no more bugs. No, you're putting in thousands of lines of code for just to fix someone's thumb being off. And, you know, those thousands of lines of code, one of those things, like, the letter L could mix up with a letter L and something else in the code, which would break that, and then that breaks that other thing, and, oh, and so on and so forth. But yeah, it's it's a buggy game, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, the next up on my list is the collector's editions. I thought I had bought the uh, tricentennial one, but it turns out <laughs> turns out on the Bethesda launcher I was using the uh, U.S. store, which there was a sale that the tricentennial was on for $79.99 which is the exact same price as it is normally in Canada I think so I paid $79.99 thinking I was getting the tricentennial <laughs> and I got the standard edition because in Canada the standard edition was $79.99 if that makes sense I'm not sure if it does anyway so I didn't get what I wanted, but you know I was fine. I paid the right price and I got the game. I just didn't get the add-ons, which doesn't really matter. I didn't want to pay more for them anyway. Uh, there was lots of bugs with that kind of stuff. There was a lot of a uh, lot of drama around the collector's editions, and one of them it came with a bag and it came with the hat. None of the stuff got shipped out on time. People were waiting months just to get a copy of the game just to find out that that copy was a digital code which could have been sent to them in an email and then after that the bag that was advertised that came with the helmet in it that was actually the wrong kind of bag that they sent out and then after that there was the Nuka Dark Room Ugh. Nuka Dark Room was like a side little project they had going on a little collector's thing you could do where it was like this dark rum bottle and it had rum on it and it was Nuka Cola uh, it, was, it looked really cool, and then when you bought it, you know, $80 later, you get it, and it's a plastic bottle that you open the lid on, and then you pull it apart, and it's a plastic casing for a normal bottle of rum. So you paid $80 for a plastic casing, casing to go around your rum. There's been a lot of drama around this game, I'm not going to go into it, because that is crazy. You can Google search Fallout 76 drama, and there'll be articles everywhere it's about everything that's going on anyway. All in all, my personal opinion on this game is that it's a very good game. I absolutely enjoy it. I've played it religiously for a long time now. I've only just started getting back into my other games that I've been playing. And that's because I've reached the max level now on this. And Well, I haven't reached max level, but I've reached the point where it's like, okay, now all I do is grind for levels. I've got my build. Like I made a medics build. I've got another build that I'm building on a different character to make him like Deadpool so radiation heals him. Uh, he doesn't get diseases, so he heals super quickly. Everything basically heals him, so he stays alive by himself. And it's really cool, the build diversity. And with my medic one here, I got it so uh, VATS regenerates really fast. And my guns are all medics ones, so when you critically hit in VATS, it heals you and your teammates. So that's pretty cool that it just keeps regenerating. And my stem packs heal other people as well as me. Uh, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed the building aspect of this more, like building your character, building your character's perks and weapons and stuff, and building just buildings in general. That's what, that's my main part of this game, which seems to be the less buggier side of things. For the people who grind it out and say, hey, I want to be max level with all the best stuff, it seems to be breaking really early. But that kind of makes sense, because if you look at it in a technical standpoint, they're testers. There's not a whole bunch of them. Like, there's a lot, because, you know, it's Bethesda. They have a lot of testers and stuff, but I'm going to give them, like, 50 testers. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of testers. But if they have 50 testers, 
what's going to happen is most of their time is going to be spent playing with friends. By friends, I mean other coworkers and stuff like that. So no matter what they do, there's always going to be like 12 people on the server all testing stuff together. You get into the open world where they have actually released the game, and that's a whole different story now. People want to play it single player, which is not exactly what they probably would have done in the studio. You might have had some people that go in there, you know, on their off time or whatever, just to test some stuff out, but I'd say the majority of the testing probably would have been done with other people on the server, besides the specific, you know, this part needs to be done in solo, test it out kind of thing. Which might have been a bad thing for them, thus why the servers were disconnecting, but that's always with multiplayer games. Once they release it, the servers are always having problems, because no one can properly design the system to handle thousands of players when you don't have thousands of players to test it out. You can only test it a certain amount, well, the server stability kind of thing. Uh, Anyway, that's my spiel. That's pretty much the end of this video. I'll leave it at that. You guys can hate on me for what I just said there in the comment, or agree with me, or have a conversation. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.